Hi everybody, it's Jay, and I'm back again with another video sneak peek preview. Today's preview is Me and the Tiny Tornado, the second book in Jesse Gusman's Good Grief Idaho romantic comedy series. Me and the Tiny Tornado is the story of Tammy, uh, a very serious, somewhat tightly wound English teacher at Good Grief High. On a whim, she decides to buy a four-wheeler. At the ATV shop, she meets Justin, the owner, and they get off to, without spoiling anything, a fairly inauspicious start. The scene that we're about to share is their second meeting, which comes as a surprise to each of them equally. I hope you like it, but as always, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't, give a thumbs up to videos that you like, and leave us plenty of comments. We love hearing from you guys. Thanks, and enjoy. The elegant lady is on my doorstep. Tammy. Tamara actually suits her better. At least, the way she looks now. Buttoned up all prim and proper like an old-fashioned school marm. I'm surprised, but not unhappy. Funny. One meeting with a person and a little bit of conversation, and all I can think about all day is her. I'm not going to miss the ball game tomorrow. This is a sweet surprise. All I can think of to say is, you missed me, didn't you? Maybe my voice comes out a little deeper, a little huskier, and there's definitely some tees in there. I think, if she weren't so shocked, she would smile at that. But either she's at the wrong house, or I am not the person she expected to answer the door. I think I'm hoping for the first. Unfortunately, her first words confirm the second. Are you Roy's father? From her tone, I assume she's hoping I'm not. I am. I'm not sure what Tammy has to do with Roy, but I know it's not going to change my infatuation with her. It's probably not going to change my attraction to her, either. I open the door wider. Why don't you come in and tell me about what you want? I half expect her to refuse, so I'm more than a little surprised when she does that lifted brow thing she does really well and steps into my house. Would you like to sit in the kitchen? I'll get you a cup of coffee, or we can sit down in the living room. There might be a little dog hair on the sofa. I add this last bit partly because I'm embarrassed and partly because some people are allergic to dogs. Rex is my collie mix, but while his hair is currently on my sofa, he's out with Roy, who for some odd reason wanted to take a walk after we got home from work tonight. I didn't have any supper ready, so I let him go. Now, as Tammy murmurs that she'd take some coffee and I lead her to the kitchen, I think that maybe my son's absence might be planned. I also just have an inkling that maybe Tammy looks like a schoolmarm because she is a schoolmarm. Did she mention something to that effect? I start to feel a little unease and am happy to busy myself with the coffee maker after pointing out a chair for Tammy. Not that I'm scared. I'm not. But I have been taking my son's word for it that he's been doing his schoolwork. This new business venture, along with keeping everything else that I do running smoothly, has taken up a lot of my free time. I haven't been as diligent as what I was when he first came. But the kid is brilliant, like his mom, not me, and I don't worry too much about schoolwork. I think I'm about to find out that I should have been more concerned. I'm sure Roy told you that I would be visiting you this evening. Tammy starts out, sounding anything but sure. Is that the line you always start with when you're pretty sure the parents have no clue that the teacher was going to pay them a visit? I ask, figuring I might as well be straight up honest. I suppose I have a few imperfections that I would rather stay hidden but lying isn't my thing. I hate being lied to, 
and that do unto others thing was drilled into me when I was a kid. I have never shaken it. Honestly, I don't want to. Seems like really good advice. She looks a little abashed as she settles herself in her chair, her back straight, her hands folded neatly in her lap while her legs are primly crossed. I really want to sit and just look at that picture. For some reason, it strikes me in all the right places. Maybe the way a beautiful painting might inspire someone to want to just stand and stare at it. I am cognizant, though, that, as a man, I'm not allowed to stare, so I don't. That doesn't change the fact that I want to. The thought kind of flashes through my mind that it would be nice to have permission to be able to just look at her. I guess, in my experience, married couples don't usually sit and stare at each other, so maybe that urge would go away. But I kind of doubt it. <laughs>